Welcome back guys to a bit of everything. So today we'll be continuing on from last videos doing tracks with defense. Um, I'll be showing you a lot more variations uh, and some variations in this tutorial. Uh, however, I want to start off this video by showing you a quick checkmate done from black side as you can see. Alright, so e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4. Knight f6, baiting that white knight to come here to g5, allowing us to do Traxler's defense. So bishop c5, knight takes the bait, f7, bishop will reply with taking f2, checking the king, to which white chooses, in this case, to take the bishop on f2. Knight will take e4, check, and we've seen other options where kings move to e2, to e3, down to f3, e1, f1, and g1. Uh, however, in this video, white chooses to play king g1. And queen will play h4, gaining a tempo, because we're threatening to checkmate here on f2. So white can't take that rook on h8 just yet. Uh, he, needs to, he needs to defend that f2 square, or else he'll be checkmate if he does take that rook. Queen will play f3, to which our knight over here on c6 will come into play, gaining a tempo by moving forward and attacking the queen, forcing white to move his queen. Queen would play here, h3, trying to swap off the queens. Uh, however, by white playing queen f3 at the beginning, he loses that defense on this e1 square over here. So black can use it to its advantage. Queen e1, check. And the only move that white can play at this point is bishop retreating back to f1, to which, because the bishop is there and it, it can't move, black comes in with knight e2, checkmate. Very nice opening. Alright, in the last video, we show you what happens if king plays g1 after knight e4. So, as you can see, king takes f2, knight takes e4. We've seen options of king g1, f1 in the past, e1, e2, or king f3, and even king e3. Uh, but we'll be looking at king e3 in this instance. Um, king e3, white will play queen h4, still threatening to check over at f2, however, it isn't checkmate because when queen plays f2, uh, king can take that knight on e4. So in this case, white believes that he has a tempo, he still has time to get out later on, if he can take this knight, uh, the rook, sorry. After all, playing two knights defense, wouldn't white want to take that rook, isn't that the whole point of knight taking f7 to double the queen and the rook? So white plays knight h8, hoping he'd win later on and escape somehow, being a rook up. However, black counters with queen f4, check. If king plays to d3, our knight can play here, knight c b4, king will play up and... Queen f2 checkmate. However, in this case, after queen f4 check, king plays to e2, to which queen will go to f2 check, moving the king down to d3, and knight playing c5. Oops. And the only space that, the only square that white can go to is to c3 by the king can't move down to d4 or to e3 because of the queen, as well as the knight here on this d4 square. King can't move down to e4 because of the knight on c5 defending that square. So white plays c3 and queen plays d4 checkmate. As we can see, after white took that rook on h8, we can say it's like a boxing match with black delivering a series of body blows before a vicious right hook checkmating the king. <clears throat> Coming to the same position when we're opening with Traxler, after king takes f2, knight e4, 
um, King will play G1 in this case and we'll have a look at some of the variations that white can play and how black would have to counter that and react to it so king g1 queen h4 as usual g3 trying to push the queen away black comes for another sacrifice knight takes g3 and h takes g3 and queen will reply back again with g3 um, by sacrificing the knight we can see that Black has fully exposed King's uh the King's position. There's no pawns for the white for white to hide under, only pieces. However, the problem with this is that white has too many pieces underdeveloped um, and unable to contribute to helping the king. Alright, so king will play f1. And our rook will now be developed by playing f8. We've saved the queen as well as the rook. And by placing the rook on f8, we pin the knight from moving, allowing us to keep that knight stuck there. And if we're able to somehow threaten, to threaten the bishop to move away, um, removing the defense from the knight, we're able to take a free piece and win our knight back to which we sacrificed before. Alright, queen will play h5. Pinning the king as well, so if somehow white is able to escape and move his knight away, um, moving that knight will cause white to gain a tempo because it opens the king into check. Alright, queen h5, but black, back, black ignores that white move and focuses here on the bishop playing d5. Play, by playing d5, um, it allows black to bait the white into taking that pawn, if not moving away, and still um, allowing black to take this knight for free, if white moves away, the white bishop that is. So d5, queen h2, white ignores that move, attacking the bishop, and wants to swap off the queens. Queen h2. Uh, black ignores it again because he is able to get a tempo by taking this knight, checking the king. So rook takes f7, king moves to e2, and bishop g4, checkmate. So white can't move up to d1 because it's checked by the bishop still. Or on e1 because the queen is defending it. Um, you can't move on this f file, as we can see with the f file. Uh, this white is this rook here on f7 is controlling the whole file, um, as well as this queen controlling this whole third rank. As we can see, it's kind of like a crisscross uh, with the bishop to finish it off. It's a very, very aggressive attacks on Black's behalf. So the second variation we'll look at, as we remember from the previous uh, variation, when we played d5, Bishop ignored that pawn on d5 and instead played queen h2. So let's what let's see what happens if White does take that pawn on d5. All right, e4, e5. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, knight g5, bishop c5, knight takes f7, bishop takes f2, king takes f2, knight takes e4, and king g1. Queen will play h4 as usual, threatening to checkmate on f2, g3, and we destroy white's position. All right, so from queen g3, king will play f1, to which we remember we need to we need to remove the threat from this knight attacking us on h8 and attacking the king by pinning the knight. So we make we get we benefit twice from that one move, removing the rook from attack. 
as well as attacking the king. So what white does to counter that is to play queen h5, also pinning our king. However, white is still at a disadvantage because he's unable to move that knight at all. He first must make a move with the king so that he can move the knight after. All right. After queen h5, as I said before, we play d5. In the previous option, we saw queen h2. Now, let's have a look what happens if white decides to take this d5 pawn. All right, bishop d5, knight will play b4. By playing d5 and bishop taking d5, we've put the bishop in a position to which our knight can come in, attack both the bishop as well as that c2 pawn. Um which then follows up with taking that rook later on on a1. But let's see how white decides to play this out. So after knight b4, rook will come down to g1. So moving the rook next to the king, as well as attacking the queen, and threatening to later take that pawn on g7 for free. Uh, however... Black ignores that rook move for now, and instead focuses on checking the king on h by placing bishop on h3. Check. Bishop will play g2 instead, trying to block the defense, uh, block the attack, and trying to put as many pieces around the king as possible, because there's no pawns instead for the king to hide behind. However. White makes a blunder by moving the bishop to g2 because he removes a, a defense from this for this f7 knight. So rook will take f7, check, and if of course white takes with the queen, a simple win like that already. However, white doesn't want to take with the queen, instead, he moves to king e2. After king e2, bishop g4 wins by securing both the queen and the king you're breaking my heart it's a good win for black so let's have a look at the other options white has to play um after we use our knight to take the g3 pawn, um, sacrificing our knight to open and expose the white king. So let's get into it. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, knight g5, bishop c5, knight takes f7, bishop takes f2, king takes f2, knight e4, king g1. Queen h4, g3, and knight takes g3. As you can see here, just by taking that pawn, we've already exposed the king with the g, f, and e pawn all out of the game already. And because white wants to take that piece, uh, he ends up sacrificing, uh, not really sacrificing, but giving up another pawn, uh, which allows black to expose the king fully. And from here we can deliver a series of check before uh, a devastating checkmate. So queen g3, king f1, rook f8, pinning the king as usual. Queen will come down here to e1 instead. As we saw in the last variation, queen moved to h5. Um, Pinning, uh, not pinning the knight, but threatening to check the king after that knight moves on f7 here. I'll talk to you about what I mean by that. So queen h5 was the last option here. Um, of course, if that knight moves on f7, if, if he's able to first get the king out of uh, check or pin, then we can check the black. Uh, white can then check black by moving his knight away. And gaining a tempo. 
However, in this case, white decides to play queen e1. And instead of checking or taking it, sorry, instead of black retaliating with taking that queen on e1, uh, black will simply play queen f4. Queen f4, king g2, moves down, and queen g4 here, sorry, queen g4. Delivering yet another check, king will play h2, and as we can see, we've moved the king away from that queen, allowing us to gain a tempo by taking that bishop here on c4, as well as threatening to then follow up next with the knight. Alright, queen c4, knight plays g5, trying to remove the attack, moving away from the attack, um, and queen will play g4. By playing g4, we have the rook here on this f-file, uh, that can maybe come in later on, um, as well as this bishop here hiding on c8, if we're able to develop our pawn later on, uh, could go for a dangerous checkmate, or a dangerous threat for a checkmate. So queen g4, queen g3, wanting to swap off the queens, yet black doesn't want to swap the queens, and plays up here on Queen e2 check. In this position, if white wants to play g2 instead, uh, trying to defend the queen, uh, trying to defend the king, sorry, by blocking, by using the queen to defend it, uh, black can simply play rook f2 and winning the queen over here. So to avoid that, white tries white plays king h3, to which he's put himself in a dangerous position that allows black to move to d6, develop the pawn, as well as gain a tempo by checking the king. So d6, king will play h4, one step down, uh, rook will come up to f4. check um, queen g4 over here and a finishing move with queen takes g4 checkmate as you can see here there's absolutely no way that white can get out of this there's a crisscross synergy with the bishop here on c8 and the queen on e2 both delivering a strong uh Cutting off the king's escape path over here on h5 as well as h3. As you can see here, let's move this down. Um, it, there's a crisscross with the queen and the bishop synergizing, cutting off the white escape, white squares for white to escape. And white has also blocked himself with the knight being on g5 and the queen on g3. Um, so he's unable to move to any of the black squares as well, uh, which leads him, leaves him with the only option to move queen g4. However, it's no use. Black still wins. All right. As we remember from this position, just another variation of when white plays g3, knight takes g3, h takes g3, and queen replies with taking g3. King will play f1. Rook f8. Now this time, rook will play g1. In the previous uh, variations, we saw queen h5. And we also saw queen e1. Now what happens if rook plays g1? So when rook plays g1, queen will play f4 check. And if king plays to e2, we're going to take this bishop over here. However, um, that's our main goal, to take that bishop while keeping the king in check. So, 
White tries to avoid that by playing King E1. Uh, by playing King E1, we check the king again, forcing him to a position so he can move to the white square. So after King E1 and Queen H4, King will play F1 this time. By playing F1, we can then take the bishop, as we saw before in the previous move, C4, checking the king. We gain a big tempo by doing this. And let's see what White does. White tries to gain a tempo by trying to develop his uh, bishop over here in C1 by pushing the for pawn forward on D3, attacking the queen as well. However, Black just takes F7 down over here. Alright, as you can see now that the queen has taken F7 and the king is on F1, uh, it checks the king. Um, the best move for white is to play g2 at this point. However, if he plays queen, uh, king e2, the queen will play f2 and checkmate the king. So the safest option is for white to play g2, move away from the center. Um, however, black still plays the same move, queen f2, and king will play h1. Before I go into king h1, if king goes down to h3, black will play d6, and it is a checkmate from here. As you can see, king can't move down because of the uh on that g4 square because of that bishop, and he can't come up over here to h2 or even h4 because of, because of that queen. Alright, so king will play h1 in this position, queen will play h4, king will go down to g2 as it's that's his only escape route, and instead of queen uh, on f2, we replace it with the rook and checkmate in this position. Looking at another variation when white will play g3 later on, so king will play g1, queen h4, g3, knight takes g3, h takes g3, queen takes g3, and white will move to f1. A rook will play f8, and the variation here that's different is that queen plays e2. After e2, black will play with d5, utilizing this bishop to come up later on to h3. Um, but bishop will play d5 taking that pawn. Uh, white can expect to play his bishop later to g2 if in case I do play my bishop to h3. However, it's not we're not focused on our bishop for now. We'll play knight b4, uh, threatening to take that bishop as well as the c2 pawn, which will later give us a free rook on that a1 square. Uh, queen will play g2. Trying to swap off the queens. However, black refuses and plays queen f4. Uh, king will play to e2. Coming in close. Uh, bishop will play g4, however. Uh, taking advantage of the white king being in the white square. Uh, and king will play e1. And because of this bishop not moving away from d5 and protecting this c2 pawn... Uh, black is able to utilize it to its advantage and checkmate. Isn't it ironic that white started off taking the f7 pawn, threatening to take the queen and the rook. However, black does it in the end. Instead of the queen and the rook, it's instead the king. So analyzing previous games, we've seen that black always comes up with a win or a checkmate uh, early within the game so right now we'll be looking at a much longer game of Traxler and we'll break it down so standard variation e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 knight f6 and we have knight g5 bishop c5 knight takes f7 and bishop takes f2 king takes f2, knight takes e4, check, 
and King G1. As you can see, we've seen many games where King plays to G1. Um, as we can see, White, uh, a lot of players who've played Traxlers as White against Traxler uh, have found that King G1 is the most favorable move. Queen H4, throwing checkmate, G3, Knight G3, H takes G3, and Queen takes G3. Regardless of King moving G1, as we can see, Black's main purpose is to destroy uh, White's wall, White's defenses, by sacrificing, as we can see, two pieces so far, um, in order to expose the king. So, Queen takes G3, King F1, and... Same as usual, a rook f8, pinning the knight. Bishop d5. Now we can see uh, in previous variations, we've had to play d5 to attack the bishop or block the bishop. Now let's see what happens if the bishop moves to d5 in anticipation to block this pawn from coming up. Well, the whole purpose of playing d5 is if the bishop does in fact take it, we've put the, the bishop in a position... To, to be attacked by the knight. And as we can see, we're doing that now. So knight b4. By white playing bishop d5, uh, we've saved us a pawn, so we don't have to actually attack the bishop or give up a pawn to uh, misposition the bishop. We can simply just play our knight b4 because white has done it for us already by playing bishop d5. So knight b4 and queen will play f3. Queen playing f3, as you can see, um, by by moving that queen down there, uh, white has neglected this c2 pawn, uh, which is being attacked by a knight. However, it does defend the bishop here on c5. And by defending the bishop on c5, if knight, oops, let's flip this board around. If knight was to take the bishop, our queen would recapture, um, still defending that knight however there's two attacks on that knight still so let's see what black does in this position so queen does take f3 uh go for a swap bishop takes f3 and rook takes f7 by taking this knight we keep the king in pin once again and still threatening to take this c2 pawn so slowly uh if a game does go for longer Black does eventually win back all the pieces that it has uh, sacrificed um, on top of more than what uh, they would have gained. So as we can see, we've got four pawns here as well taken from white's side. All right, so rook takes f7. King will move down to e2, moving away from pin. However, white doesn't have enough tempo to try and defend that pawn as well. And knight takes c2, attacking the rook on a1. Alright. So, knight takes c2, rook h7. White tries to attack on the opposite side, trying to uh, recapture the pawns that had been lost. Um, however, knight d4, coming down there, instead of taking that rook, uh, puts white in a position of double. So you got check on the king as well as attacking that bishop. Um, later on, knight can come back to take that a1 rook since it's not going anywhere. However, knight d4, king d1. King moves up and rook will play f3, taking it. As we can see here, the reason why the rook had taken it instead of the knight is because the knight is um, blocking the, the escape route for the king on c2, as well as still threatening to play there if the king does move uh, away. So, example, if king was to move up there, uh, we'd come up here and take that, and still threatening to move the knight to c2, checking the king as well as attacking the rook. Okay, <clears throat> from here, however, white plays up there, rook takes f3, and rook h8, check. 
King will play f7, not even stressed, um, and Rook will play back to h1, uh, defending the the top rank from this knight on f3. All right, because a simple if let's say White was to play here h4 or let's say a random move at all um checkmate is up here for white so white plays up there to defend the checkmate from here so rook h1 black will utilize its bishop and pushing the pawn forward d6 and d3 will follow from white bishop g4 will come here threatening to open check with the rook and the bishop synergizing and let's see what white plays so after bishop g4 king will play d2 so as you can see the reason why white played d3 was to give the king a bit of breathing room allowing it to escape all right rook will play f2 checking the king to which the king will have to be forced to move down to c3. Rook c2, defended by the knight, checking the king and closing off its escape route. So king b4, as you can see, the king can't go anywhere on this c file due to the rook blocking it. So king b4, and now black can focus using its pawns and its arsenal to attack the king from its position so a5 check king a4 b5 another attack on the pawn with the pawn king is forced from b5 if king moves to a3 then b5 oops sorry let's fall back a bit so after a5 if king doesn't move to a4, instead if king moves to a3, b5 will still be played. Followed by that, rook will go to f1, checking the king. The king will move to g8, hiding away from the rook. Uh, and it's not exposed to or threatened to any other check. King g8, hiding down there. b5 to which king is forced to move to a3 uh, pushing forward again b4 king goes back down to a4 and bishop d7 checkmate as you can see the power of track score shows that black fully utilizes it all its pieces uh, even the pawns to corner the king and end up checkmating it so we will be observing another game where King will reply with e2 in this situation. Black pushes its knight forward to the center, knight d4. And after knight d4, forces king to play e3, pushes down. Queen will play h4, as usual, moving away from the attack from knight on f7. And rook will play 1. This is what's different. White quickly plays f1 instead of the usual g3 from there or maybe uh queen coming up or whatever uh white will decide to play rook f1 already defending this knight before rook comes to f8 um however black plays at a very black plays a very strong move by playing d5 by playing d5 uh black gains a tempo by attacking the bishop sacrifice uh sorry Attacking the bishop, sacrificing a pawn in order to gain a tempo to move the bishop next. So white takes the bait and bishop comes to g4. Now if queen plays here on e1, then knight will take c2 and 
it would suffice. As we can see, um, the knight has attacked the rook, the queen, and checked the king all at the same time. So this would be a win for black, as the next move would be capturing the queen. All right. However, rook also went on this f file to to block the incoming attack from later. Uh, and bishop will take f3. G will reply with taking f3, and knight will come down to f5, checking the king. All right. By moving this knight first and checking the king, uh, it allows black to reposition its pieces uh, before going for another attack. But by checking the king, black gains a tempo. So king will be forced to move to e2, queen will come up f2 check, and force the king back down to d3. Queen will check again, harassing the king, moving the king back to e2, and our knight will play g3. Knight on f, play g3. As we can see here, we're sacrificing yet another piece in order to remove this attacker on this square. So h takes g3, knight takes g3, forcing the king to move only up, as that's the only square available. It's unable to move to f2 because of the queen, unable to move to e3 because of the queen, and able, unable to move to f1 because of the knight. So the only move for white is to play king e1, to which queen g1 checkmates the king. The last variation that we'll be covering today is after knight takes e4, um, checking the king, the king will play to e2. Alright, so e4, Oops. e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, knight g5, bishop c5, knight takes f7, bishop takes f2, king takes f2, knight takes e4, and from here, the sub variation of king playing e2. King playing e2, black is able to um, play aggressively, bringing out the other knight into the center, uh, checking the king. Uh, white put himself in trouble as he's put himself in a position to which black can utilize another piece to the center as well as gain a tempo by checking the king. Um, knight e4, uh, knight d4, sorry. King will play e3, comes down, try and take the knight on e4. However, queen moves h4, defending that knight, as well as moving away from attack. White does the same, g3, and same moves as usual, we'll take the pawn on g3 with our knight. h will take g3, uh, attacking our queen with the rook as well as the pawn. However... Just a simple take would suffice. So queen g3, and white decides to play king e4 in this position, moving into black's territory. Um, black can utilize this to its advantage by playing d5. As we can see, by taking, by checking the king as well as attacking the bishop, we both uh, we also utilize our bishop, bringing it out into play. Over here in c8, um, depending on what piece takes which, in this case, let's see what happens when white takes d5. The king takes d5, sorry. Bishop e6, check, pulling the king further into uh, black's territory. However, white, black moves, uh, white king moves to c5. b6 check king b4 moving around and a5 king moves to a4 and bishop will play d7 over here as we can see from this position on king has the king has moved from e1 down to e f uh, f2 
and somehow made its way all across to the other side of the board here on a4 uh, while black is utilizing all its pieces uh, the king is just dancing around the board uh, wasting precious moves um, so king a4 bishop d7 checking the king bishop b5 wanting to at least swap off pieces so there's less threat however because of that knight there on d4 Black is simply just allowed to take it, checkmating white. As you can see from this uh, variation, how how dangerous Traxler could be if white doesn't know how to counter it or um, has never encountered it before. Uh, overall, regardless of white plays, black does an exceptionally uh, outstanding job based on how you play and how you utilize your pieces um, especially with the knight on e4 sacrificing again once again to take that g3 pawn uh, just in order to expose the king so the queen can uh, the queen can check the king plenty of times uh, exposing him bringing him out from uh, away from white's side into black's territory and ultimately come up with a checkmate as we can see here so thank you very much guys for watching today i hope you've learned something uh, this is Traxler's variation once again and hopefully we can see you in the next video thanks guys all right all right all right okay